But now it is, of course, official. Sadiq Khan has been cooking up the figures on air pollution to give credence to his ULEZ empire. Again, after news last year about Sadiq's interference in pollution research, the Advertising Standards Authority has now pulled him up over misleading the public with air pollution exaggerations. Who could have guessed it? Joining me in the studio is a man taking the fight to Sadiq Khan, the founder of Fair Fuel UK, London mayoral candidate, of course, uh, the one and only Mr Howard Cox. Howard, good to see you. Hello, Mike. Welcome to the Independent Republican, Mike Graham. I mean, how many more times is this guy going to get away with just making stuff up? Well, I'm, I'm much stronger. We're talking about some people say Porky. He's a pathological liar. Yeah. He is absolutely... Uh, I don't know how he's got away with it and how... Um, uh, and this is serious. You know, his boss, Sakir Starmer, has allowed him to get away with it. Yeah. In, you know, he's, he actually is elected official and, in my opinion, he's, he's fraudulent claims. Yeah. He's basing policy on that, right. all on this emotion, all to get what he wants, this green sort of virtual mm. signalling agenda adopted. And the worst which, thing about it, it's costing, an and well, it's costing it's drivers a fortune. Yeah, it's taking an awful lot of money out of the pockets yeah. of ordinary Londoners who he claims that he's saving their lives while he's ripping them off. Because we know for a fact that the poor are the people who are suffering the most here, the people who live in areas where there isn't much public transport, Absolutely. particularly in the expanded area, the, the, you know, the extension, the ULES extension zone, where people need to drive an older car because they can't afford to buy a new one, where they're paying the price of having to just go down to the shops. I mean, in this particular case, just tell us what he was doing. As he was effectively comparing air quality from before the ULEZ zone and after the ULEZ zone, except he wasn't, right? Well, it wasn't. It's Again, it's one of these things called a, a modelling process. Mm. There's three things he's been picked up on. One mm. of them is that it's more polluting sitting inside your car. Right. He's also saying that it, it was more. It is more polluting outside Greater London to justify yeah. the fact the extension. And the other one, of course, is the famous one, the NOx has been halved. Right. The nitrogen dioxide, mm. the, the one of the gaseous pollutants. All three is tosh, all three are lies, yeah. and he based policy on that. Yes. And don't forget, he also manipulated public consultations. He's also lied about mm. the, the 4,000 deaths. There's one person that's right. died in the last 10 years. Yes. But he's saying there are 4,000 deaths every year. Right. Uh, and it's uh, unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know how he's got away with it. And I see this week he also was encouraged by his socialist friend, Ms Hidalgo, over in Paris this week, <laughs> uh, who <who've, laughs> put in these ridiculous parking charges so that if you're actually parking a big SUV-type car, you're going to be paying something like €200 Euros just to park it on the street in Paris. Ridiculous. They already do it, I know, in some places like yeah. Bath, I think they do it as well. But the thing is, you've been exposing this guy for ages. But I think he actually says... Uh, in these claims that the most polluted place in London is inside your car, when clearly it's down the tube station, isn't it? Well, you, well said. As you know, I've been down there with my yeah. my air quality testing mm. meter. It's about 2,000 to 3,000% more polluting right. down there. And he's happy to send little children down oh, yeah. there, on there. Cheap train running. drivers. Yes, I mean, He doesn't exactly. seem to care about them, does he? No, not at all. I mean, the other couple of interesting stories today around the whole kind of green, air, green and clean air and the electric cars and all of that... Two things. The House of Lords has been complaining <laughs> about Rowan Atkinson. They say Rowan Atkinson made terrible, terrible claims about electric cars not really being um, as clean as everyone says they are and basically telling people that if you want to buy an electric car, we're not ready yet and you shouldn't bother. They're now blaming Rowan Atkinson for this kind of backlash against electric cars because sales are going down, aren't they? Well, look, he's been very honest. He he was an EV convert. He was very much... He's used it, but he's actually realised, and unfortunately, yeah. he recognised that they are not. From cradle to grave, mm. electric vehicles produce more CO2 emissions than diesel and petrol vehicles. Right. I repeat, from cradle to grave. Yes. Yes, when on the road, less CO2 right. because there's no exhaust. Yeah. But actually making the stuff and disposing it, and especially getting past the battery on in terms of disposing right. of the big batteries, I'm afraid it is it impacting on the emissions much more than yes. people think. Yes, and the Advertising Standards Authority, again, has actually backed what Rowan Atkinson said because they've actually issued a, a ruling on an advert that was put out by BMW this week in which they say you cannot claim that an electric car has zero emissions because the mining of the battery causes emissions. Every time you charge the car, it causes emissions. Whenever there's a process of fixing the car, uh, whenever there's a process of uh, taking it to a garage, putting tyres on it, you know, using the tyres, which, which also give off, you know, pollution into the air, you know, it's a complete nonsense to go on about how this is the cleanest form of transport. And there's a little matter of the electric uh, charging point. The electricity is generated by fossil fuels. Exactly right. <laughs> well, this is the thing. I mean, it's a complete nonsense to actually try and make out that electric cars are better for the planet. 
And in fact, you could argue they're actually worse for the planet. Well, we do. I mean, mm. I, we wrote a report, the Motorcycle Action Group, Alliance of British Drivers and me at Fairfield mm. UK. We produced a report and gave it out to every MP. And I think it did open a few eyes. Of course, the Greens said it's all a load of old tosh as yeah. well. Yeah, well, this is the thing. And I mean, we've been sold down the river yes. by all of our politicians who have all, you know, hooked themselves up to this net zero mania, which is what it is. Um, nobody still to this day, whenever I ask them, any politician, when I say to them, well, what if we do get to net zero by yes. whatever year it is that you want us to get to it by, what happens then? Will my life be immeasurably better? Uh, will I walk down the street breathing in cleaner air? Of course not. Well, let's remind ourselves we're responsible for 1% of the emissions in the whole yeah. world. Right. And we import most of the fuel when we could actually have... Look, fracking and all other sorts of oil, North Sea, etc. Yeah. We could be self-sufficient and our fuel could be cheaper. And don't forget, in four weeks' time, Mike, we've got a budget. Yes. As you know, that's my time of fighting to get fuel Is, duty Are you cut. hopeful that they will either uh, cut fuel duty or at least cut something for... The motorists. I, I don't. I really don't know. All I know is I don't think they put it up because that would be uh, economic and political suicide for mm. a start. But there's two things about it. I hope they cut fuel duty a little bit. I want it to be a lot, but I think they will cut fuel duty and say they're a tax cutting and helping motorists. Mm. And the other thing, you remember the pump watch thing, which is the opportunity yes. profiteering. I want that to have teeth, and I want yes. him to announce that. Well, you know what I found really ridiculous was that um, the, the price difference differential, particularly on motorway service oh, stations right. and 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 ordinary sort of you know, petrol stations, even in London, which would normally be more expensive say than the ones outside in Sussex or whatever but they're, ch they're charging like 20 30p more on a motorway service station absolutely and that's why I want pump per liter that if is. we had a proper pump watch a proper uh, consumer price regulatory mm. body on pr pump pricing we would see it would be transparent be honest and we know what's happening that 30p wouldn't happen yeah it's incredible absolutely ridiculous well Howard great to see you again as ever Always good to uh, call out Sadiq Khan uh, on the sort of nonsense that he puts out there as fact when it is clearly not fact at all.